It is the 4th of March, 1939. The Empire of Japan is making incursions into China. They have uh, overrun Beijing and uh, are moving south. So for now, the Chinese are holding on the river lines, but they've already crossed. Uh, the Japanese have already managed to cross over here near Jinan. So uh, this is, well, not looking too great for China. We've still got our forces concentrated uh, around Vladivostok just to make sure that things are holding. But for now, we don't anticipate a major engagement with the Japanese. The bigger problems are obviously the Finns, who are amassing forces on our borders. And uh, things in Europe are starting to get interesting as well, because the Germans are still expanding. That said, we are rushing towards the rushing towards the next uh, the next one for heavy industry which is going to it's all the way over here which is going to give us um, two percent consumer good factories and two research bonuses and after that the industrial modernization is the next one for the two years ahead of time so in 140 days roughly we are gonna have a research slot available and we will be able to uh, I'm just going to go here. We will be able to grab um, Construction 5. is probably the one I'm going to go for. And then uh, I'm going to use the other uh, I'm going to use the other research bonuses here as well. Uh, we do have um, we do have a uh, we do have some excavation bonuses. We can use those. Here, here it actually stacks with the technology sharing. So uh, we're going to be doing that, but right now the focus is on construction because we are going to need a lot of military factories. We are also going to need some some better air equipment. And in that regard, I am actually planning to start infiltrating the German industry. So we've got our our German recruit of uh, our German spy here, Richard Sorge, and I think we can infiltrate the German air force. And we're going to send both of them. And ready when this is going to unfortunately cost us three civilian factories, but uh, we'll, we'll get that going and we might be able to uh, steal some of their blueprints and get some, some of their advances in that. Okay, other than that, yeah, our own Air Force is still in a very pitiful state. Uh, we are producing, I think, a couple of. Yeah, we're, pr we're producing a couple of the prototypes, but basically uh, not an awful lot. And uh, we're going to start producing the KV-1A, the heavy tank. And uh, one thing that was that uh, has been discussed in the comments. Uh, thanks, by the way, everybody, for all your input in the comments. I am trying to keep it somewhat historical, but obviously also I am going to have to contend with a significantly buffed Germany. So if we have a quick look, the Germans are... Uh, the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, has somewhere somewhere between two and three thousand airplanes. And the army is obviously... army is obviously quite numerous as well. But uh, I, I am considering to build more of these sort of infantry tanks, because traditionally... So a tank meta in Hearts of Iron is kind of... Tanks are there for pushing and uh, tanks are there to, to do breakthroughs. So they're built around speed and medium tanks, obviously. So you rush mediums and then you just go with it. Whereas uh, I think historically the Germans were actually quite surprised when they run into things like the KVs because these things were significantly more powerful than anything the Germans had around in 1941. <laughs> So pretty well armored, but not the fastest things in the world. So I'm thinking of actually using them defensively. So I will be designing some defensive, some defensive tank divisions. Uh, we we have some navy experience that we need to start using. In fact, so let's have a quick look if there's anything we can get out of the naval command that makes sense for us to get. Um, we could go. Um, Je ne call would make sense because that would um, just allow us to go light ships, but it's not really an awful lot. We could just do naval reform, which is going to increase the naval experience gain. I think that's a good one to, for now. And is there anything here that we need? 
I think not really, uh, but this will increase. We can also just go down the doctrines and um, yeah, I'm not not too concerned about the uh, not too concerned about the uh, the admirals. I might just give um, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do an awful lot with the navy. Let's let's be honest. So maybe I'll just go for the signals training, and then we've got that out of the way. The air force, however, is there anything I need to do here? Um, untried pilots penalty for new air wings. This might actually not be terrible. This seems to be a a Soviet special skill. Generally, I will go for centralized control here. But um, that. Given that we're not really going for training an awful lot right now, that might not be bad. Ace effectiveness plus 50% is also interesting. And a couple of interesting things we can do here. And I think in the first one, uh, I am sort of thinking industry liaisons or, um, or uh, aircrew surveys might be in interesting once I start going down the doctrines. So... Uh, yeah, definitely a couple of things that uh, things that we can do here. I'm not yet picking the spirit of uh, spirit of army here. Um, operational reserves might be an interesting one, uh, although static warfare is probably the best that we can take for the beginning. And uh, flexible org once we start actually uh, start actually going into the assault, but um, uh, that's probably the one we want to take. And here. I um this is oh this is a new one accomplished heritage so this is for the uh for giving giving uh, giving officers things uh we, ideological loyal uh, loyalty is kind of interesting in general for for communist but uh, I don't need the manpower so <laughs> uh not really uh we could go professional officer corps to be honest and just for just for now, which reduces the doctrine cost and gives us more experience gain. So I think that's um, yeah. We'll we'll go with professional officer corps for now. Okay, uh, we're not really doing anything at this point. So the experience coming in is is I think all from. Uh, actually, this this applies to the ones that we are getting from uh, that we're getting from the, from the advisors, uh, fr from the, from the military high command. So that's not too bad. Uh, the other thing we need to do something is, is about stability. Uh, once, so I think, uh, yeah, Stalin himself still does minus 10% stability. Is there anything in here that we can use? I think there are some, yeah, faithful servant of Lenin, uh, plus 10 base stability but it doesn't so that basically negates the Stalin uh, Stalin's minus 10 percent but uh, it's still not enough so at some point at some point we might need to do the uh, we might need to do the improved worker conditions decision unfortunately that reduces uh, my factory output by 10 percent and and costs me five percent consumer goods factories so this is not ideal but uh, on the long term it's a good thing to have because the uh, stability obviously increases our factor output factory output so uh, i think that's not actually except for the consumer goods uh, that's not actually a terrible thing um, i'm also not sure about the trotsky plot purge if there's anything in here that can still deal with that uh, let's see trotsky uh it's that no that's just nothing there are some really good buffs here for stalin down there but um having murdered trotsky <laughs> still hasn't been enough and yeah there's not more here so i think that's something we're just gonna have to live with uh, going forward anyway lots of talk uh, let's uh, let's unpause and uh just keep an eye on things uh, what are we missing here? Uh, strategic bombers. Yeah, that's fine. We're not we're not going to do those. But uh, a couple of construction projects should be finishing up here relatively soon. We've got some unassigned divisions. I think I was always going to give these to uh, Vlasov for now. And 
and they can go into that front. Okay, radio detection is finished. That is good. We are going to um, we're going to need radar stations. Now we can get better radios for the tanks out of um, out of the improved radar research. But I do want to check if there's any industry research that I want to start already. This is still too far ahead. Um, this is still ahead of time. Oh, are we in infantry? Yeah, we might need to catch up with some. How many do we have right now? Okay, we've got one on the infantry uh, infantry branches. Um, we also we we also kind of need Katyushas. <laughs> so we could do motorized rocket artillery. This is one of those things that people don't use an awful lot, but I think it'll actually be nice to have that available in the game. So. Um, uh, I'll save that for a little later. Uh, these Engineer 2s, I think, yeah, there was the flamethrower. So the light tanks, we can use them as flame tanks going forward and just convert them as they stand today. So that's definitely one I'm going to need. I am thinking logistics, actually. Logistics company is something we're going to need as well. We already did the armored trains. We could also do, um, actually... We're going to do the uh, railway guns because these we're going to need and they take a while to they take a while to construct. So let's get that started. And um, I am I was thinking of getting the artillery designer next. Uh, actually, no, we, we could get the popular figurehead that gives us 15 percent stability. Yeah, that that's what we're doing. And then uh, we could also we can also get uh, Merkulov for an additional operative, or maybe we do that first. Mm, no, nope. uh, Kalinin gets into the government next once we have 150 political power. I think the political power growth is actually relatively decent by now, because uh, Stalin and Politburo are giving us additional there. So once these construction projects here are done, I think uh, we are going to start uh, throwing a bit more in. We're starting to build some military factories and uh, it's about time because <laughs> we do need to we do need to get the armament uh, armament production up. Um, this is uh, that's just building slots. Yeah, we're not doing that for now. And um, this was costing us uh, political power which I need first so we're doing that later and anything else here uh, the high yield is about to run out so unfortunately that means we're going to get um, uh, I'm gonna untick that for now 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 I'm gonna leave it there just to make sure that I don't forget about it but the 15% is actually gonna get us to 90 so I think actually I don't need to do that uh, let's untick it let's untick it for now don't need to do that. Uh, low manpower, yeah, we. Uh, that's another thing we need to do. We need to get off to uh, extensive conscription just to make sure that we have um, we have the manpower. But uh, it's not quite necessary yet. And obviously, at some point, we need to get get off free trade. But uh, right now, uh, we're, we're trading away some things, which gives us a couple of factories. But it's not a massive. Um, it's not a massive. A massive amount. Uh, Japan is importing all oil, which I'm okay with at this stage, since we're not at war with the Japanese. So let's just keep going. Um, one thing that I wasn't sure of is where the T-34 design tank design comes from. I think it comes out of it comes out of a, out of an event like uh, where we are designing tanks together with the Germans. But I'm not a hundred percent certain. So oh yeah, okay. We've got three civilian factories. Uh, we are uh, we are definitely going to need more infrastructure and okay let, let's uh, let's see where we got factories available actually uh, anything with high infrastructure we can build another military factory here at some point we will we will need to start building um, building synthetic refineries to get some rubber because once Japan, as somebody has rightfully pointed out, once Japan overruns Southeast Asia, no more rubber. And obviously we're going to need radar stations at some point as well. But for now, for now, we're just going to concentrate on uh, building some uh, factories. So more, infra uh, more industry where we can. Have I gotten some... Have I gotten some better infrastructure somewhere? Yes, but they're all built up, I think. Yeah, they're all pretty much built up. 
we do have we do could build something in the east but i'm more feeling like the urals region there so uh anything that has anything that has uh anything that has resources we can improve the infrastructure and then just build otherwise we can just build where we are um i think there's not an awful lot here Th there's some chromium here we might as well do that one and build another civilian factory there um here oh here here we've got lots of infrastructure so we can build like uh one two three and then the rest can be military factories down here that is a relatively safe area um any any infrastructure projects that we can do here in the region uh we can build some infrastructure there okay so that, that should give us that should give us a decent amount of things to construct for now and have we start yes we are starting no we're not yet starting we're still on the a20 medium tanks that we need to build more of and the kv1 so we definitely need a bunch more we didn't know a bunch more military factories but it's starting it's starting we're getting there all right um the one thing that well the reason i haven't really started yet is um due to uh, the due to the red army demodifiers i haven't started like exercising the the troops although that might not be something terrible to do i think we can get say for example vlasov to just go and exercise the troops for now that will generate a little bit of um of army experience and these are all regular divisions okay here this why, why, why does he have... He's only running NKVD divisions. These need to go somewhere else. Um, where can we put these? Uh, put this there, okay. And oh, then he, gotcha. he's, he's got the NKVD troops. I was actually thinking... Because these, these are not great divisions. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll leave them at the front line. However, we do need at some point to start guarding our ports <laughs> to a degree. And make sure that the um, that nobody does any naval invasions, especially in uh, Sevastopol. So maybe we could um, let's see if we could if we copy this division and just replace the military police. Yeah, we're going to duplicate this, and this is the uh, that is the NKVD division P for port <laughs> and these are going to be garrison divisions and then we'll switch that to an engineering company so for 10 we get um, we get a 12 width infantry division with uh, with engineers that should be decent for a port guard so we can start uh, actually they need a different symbol so these guys um, these guys can actually stay, but we're going to change the NKVD to something a little more appropriate. Like, um, how about a sickle? <laughs> yeah, good. Um, actually, okay. Oh, oh, actually, hang on, hang on. These guys need to have this much better. These guys get, guys get the hammer and sickle. All right. And then the... Oh, no, hang on. I didn't do it. Okay, these guys get the hammer and sickle. I didn't know that that was there. Maybe that was added in one of the... in the in an update or something i'm not sure and or i just didn't pay attention so the nkvd guides get um this is more like a green beret or something thing um anything more suitable for people who stand in the back and shoot you if you're retreating uh, basically more of a police force um yeah no nah, I'm, I'm fine we will use the I can find it there we'll use the sickles for those guys and then we've got these as port guards okay so we'll train up oh I don't know um, we'll train up uh, let's get like 20 of those out for now I just want them to guard some of the ports and make sure that no no naval invasion because we have a quite a few ports here in the south and uh, we could be facing naval trouble here in in the area so that's something we can do um yeah the the other thing 
I think that somebody mentioned we should be upgrading our ships. Well, I haven't really looked at the Navy, but um, let's have a brief look at what's actually in what's actually in uh, we can de decommission a couple of things that this is all early cruisers um, and these are early submarines. Why have I not decommissioned them yet? So no, we're no longer building the early ships or early cruisers or early destroyers or early submarines. Okay, there we go. So we've got the Marat class. Um, is there anything we can actually refit on these things and is it worth doing? Uh, uh, this is going to take forever, <laughs> but um, we might be able to not have a better fire control. We could give them better AA. It's really marginal, however. But it gives our, ships, our shipyard something to do. And uh, we haven't haven't researched anything here, so we could give them a bit more AA, to be honest, and that might help. I am sort of interested in these mine laying destroyers, however, because these things are these things are quite are probably quite useful. And let's have a quick look at the submarines. Um, this is something we could relatively easily. Uh, this is weird because it's partial mine laying so I think I'm going to decommission these as well and uh, we can create a variant of this which we're gonna I think there was a series 10 but I'm just gonna use that because I've decommissioned that and no not not mines uh, better torpedo tubes and we've got better engines already so uh, and that would be the series 10 uh, save that and I think we can start, uh, we will start building up some submarine forces. They might come in handy. But first, we'll build a bunch of these destroyers. And I would like them, um, I would like them to be in, uh, do I put them in the Baltic fleet? What was the Baltic? Baltic was uh, fjords and archipelago. So that stuff, if I can mine this, yeah, Baltic is probably the one, the first one that I want them in. So, so let's start constructing some of these, and they will go in the uh, Baltic fleet. And uh, we will we'll leave one on convoys. Uh, just, but we'll we'll start we'll start increasing uh, increasing the mine layers here, and then we can do some useful things there. And then submarines can come later. Okay, so for now, have I missed? Have I forgotten anything? Um, field marshals. Did I want to promote somebody? Uh, I think I already did, right? Yes, uh, uh, Brokosovsky. He's he's now a field marshal. So I did want to to get a couple more divisions to start training. These guys are already trained. Um, this is pure, just pure infantry, so they can start exercising. Uh, the tanks definitely not doing that just yet. Uh, these guys can start exercising. I think I'm, I'm starting. Yeah, we're, st we're still we're still missing right. infantry equipment. Obviously, we've got some cavalry divisions here. They may as well start exercising right. as well. Um, mountain divisions, except for the one that has been fighting, uh, can exercise too. And these guys can also go and do some infantry exercises. There we go. So now we should be uh, now we should be gaining a little bit also. Um, of uh, of XP. Uh, what are the other decisions that are available here? Oh, the uh, the um, uh, we we have propaganda decisions. So that's giving us additional material, uh, fuel, and that's going to give us um, supply up construction speed. This is super useful once we start building up the supply lines. For now, we're not I doing that. that. And I think I need another army here. Uh, yeah, we'll do another army here. Who can we assign here? Um, we can assign... Do I have an infantry commander? Uh, I would love to use him for... Actually, why am I not using him for the... Who have I got here assigned in special forces? Uh, Popov. He's the winter infantry leader. I can... Actually, you know what? These guys can get um, Kuznetsov because he's a... He's a commando. I like that. So he's going to go in here, which means that uh, the guy who was just freed up, uh, where is he? And where is he? There, he, him. 
he can he can take over this new group uh, new group of troops and uh, he can instantly start start exercising. Okay, so I've got that sorted. And yes, we we need tank divisions and we need them soon. But unfortunately, uh, we need the industry first to make that actually happen. So. Um, Okay, uh, German troops have crossed into Bohemia. Oh dear, and uh, it looks like Czechoslovakia is um, not looking too great. <laughs> so that gets carved up, which gives the Germans an unfortunate boost in their in their combat capabilities, which I'm not all too happy about. Uh, PC of heavy industry is almost done. That would be the industrial research bonus. And I was going to use that, I think, for concentrated. Yeah, I was going to use that to start with concentrated four. And then uh, once we get the 150 political power, we can hire Kalinin. And we do need to accelerate our our um, our war making for, uh, capabilities. I think I'm going to just increase the uh, this does not have this does not have um, uh, what is this? What is this? Uh, this province here, Gorky, does not have any uh, any resources. But the uh, infrastructure also speeds up the construction. So uh, we are going to start building up some military industry over there. Okay, how's my how's that going on? That's going to go until June. At some point, we will need to uh, we will need to actually uh, divert some production capacity to upgrade our spy agency, but not quite yet. I want to get this done here. Okay, we've got 150. Now we can hire, hire Kalinin. And right now we are at plus 10% factory output and two, minus 2.5% 2 2 consumer goods. And we have 45 consumer goods, uh, 45 factories being pulled from consumer goods, but because we're no longer running the uh, the propaganda mission. But if we are hiring uh, Kalinin, that boosts it up to 90, which gives us 6% extra factory output and brings that down to 42. So we just got some, we just got some free factories out of this. And uh, we, we now have a, uh, we now have a 90% base stability, or 90% stability, which is much appreciated. Okay. Uh, we do need to do something about the Air Force, but um, after the industry focuses, I am planning to go for the foreign, uh, for the uh, foreign, foreign politics ones, and then eventually we'll get to the Air Force. They'll just have to make do for now. Improved infantry equipment, and yeah, we do need to start switching that over. So that needs to happen next. And so we are behind with our infantry equipment and we'll have a lot of guns to catch up on because we're still 35,000 guns behind. We are going to need some more factories on infantry equipment, aren't we? How much are we putting right now? Uh, we're putting 10 factories, which isn't great. At, uh, the uh, production efficiency obviously is, is sort of our problem <laughs> because uh, we are not very good at that. But that's fine. We'll, we'll just we'll build okay equipment and... Um, We'll build OK equipment and uh, we'll deal with it. We'll just throw a lot of it out. That's that's kind of the Soviet mantra here. So I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, plus, also, we have the uh, what's it called? The Gosprojekt Stroy, which gives us, I think, uh, no, that was Project Efficiency Cup. OK. The war in China continuing. The Chinese Air Force has been stretched thin trying to defend the airspace over China. Uh, useful opportunity to test our most modern equipment under combat. Yes, uh, definitely do that. So let's dispatch the uh, Soviet volunteer group. And uh, that decision, where is it? Uh, don't see it. Is it not there yet? Um, boop, boop, boop. Or maybe I need to tick over or something. No, let's take a day over. Okay, still not there. Uh, radio propaganda, regional. I don't see it. Um, do I? How do I do this? Well, uh, it was China, right? So 
that China, not that China, which is which wants our air, our air volunteers, which I'm more than happy to send. Can I just send? No, I can't send volunteers because we're not supporting that faction because we haven't done the foreign policy, uh, the foreign policy uh, things just yet. So uh, where is that decision? Dispatch that. Uh, Soviet education. No, it's not here. Okay, well, we'll figure it out eventually. But uh, I'd be more than happy to dispatch some uh, some volunteers to China. Maybe it's in the air. Can I literally just uh, send some air force over there? No, I can't. Anyway, let's let's complete the uh, let's complete that uh, that focus. There we go. PC of Heaven's industry reorganized, which gives us minus 2% consumer goods factories. So now we're down to 39. So another three factories for free. And I forgot what the other one bit, bit was. I think it was research bonuses. So as soon as actually, um, that is actually running. Could I, uh, I've got, how many do I have? Uh, I think I've got, I've got two out of that. Um, two research bonuses for industry. Could I change that? Could I change that to here? That would be three or four days. And we've got 295 days. So we could switch that to here, start using the bonus, because that is, that is way ahead of time. So uh, that might not be terrible. So let's switch that over, use the bonus, and get that going. And uh, but then we would have to wait for 60 days for the next one to finish up to restart that again. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll switch that over because it hasn't been going for so long. And it's still going to be 70 days until we get the... I need to start. Okay, hang on. Let, let's let's think this through. So the next one in seventy days is going to be give me uh, the two the two years ahead of time penalty reduction. So I want to use that to get to. I want to use that to get to uh, construction five because uh, that would. Or we go to concentrated five actually. Maybe we do that because that's that's gonna that's gonna further increase the factory output. So e either of these two, we can use the uh, we can use the two year ahead of time bonus to to catch that. I mean, this is ten percent speed. This is output. Um, both are good, but what I can do so what I can do is I can take this one, which hasn't been running for the, for that long yet, and switch it over here to make that happen, because then. Um, I can I can get this one actually quicker by switching the next one back and using the hundred percent bonus, and then we're going to use industrial uh, uh, the industrial modernization is going to be where we're going to go next, and then we need to flop over to foreign policies because it's already May, and I don't think we're going to get to the winter war in time. <laughs> I'm a little behind here due to due to construction, but uh, our construction speed is. Uh, is relatively impressive at this point and I think we are building yeah we are building a lot and we're kind of spiraling a little bit with the civilian factories here and uh, not getting that many from trade right now but uh, we're definitely doing a lot of things okay in between episodes I will research how I can get to this send volunteer things to China and then or oh, I might actually this might actually just be waiting for that maybe I can't do that until I do uh, until I do the uh, maybe I, I, I it needs to wait until I do these focuses over here but um, yeah mm. okay uh, we'll do this one first and then we'll work uh, then after that we'll go through the common turn uh, Baltic security uh, Baltic claims and uh, secure Leningrad uh, f to demand Karelia from the Finns because we are sort of overdue with that. And yeah, we want to make sure that we get the Baltics secured before the Germans get any funny ideas. And uh, that's going to be the next episode. So for now, thanks everybody and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.